All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Into the Cauldron. Uh, I am here today with a very exciting guest because I actually just picked up his book on Seven Spheres. So I was like, oh, I need to reach out to this guy. He's really cool. Uh, I am here with Rupus Opus, uh, and he is here to talk about all hermeticists and hermeticism and general kind of using magic to make your life better effectively, which I'm very excited about. Um, so, Rupus, thank you for coming on. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. I uh, Thanks for having me. I was very excited to get to see you reaching out to me. You've interviewed so, several of my friends and I feel, feel prestigious and I feel like <laughs> important now. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I was saying that um, I, I just picked up your book on seven spheres uh, and I am loving it and sort of the hermetic worldview and the, the cosmology and obviously the rituals and, and things for kingdom building and that kind of thing. Um, but for people who don't know you or your work or anything about sort of applied hermetics and that kind of thing, uh, how would you kind of introduce yourself and, you know, your philosophy, your worldview? Um, yeah, I, I used to be a little edgier than I am these days, but mo- mostly what I do is, uh, 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 it's, um, 16th century based, uh, hermeticism, right? So like, uh, based on, uh, Agrippa's three books of occult philosophy primarily is like the bulk of of where almost all of my occult information really comes from. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've I have been exposed to Donald Michael Craig's Eleven Lessons in High Magic and Modern Ceremonial Magic and post nineteenth century Golden Dawn and Golden Dawn extrapolated magic. Um, I was a member of the OTO for a while. They asked me to leave. Uh, it was. It was. Well, what's the, what's the, I, I want to ask the story around that, but the, yeah, the it, it's it's your it's your standard OTO story. <laughs> it's right, like okay, uh, yeah. somebody with a big personality and opinions gets involved with an organization that's trying to do something, and disagreements occur. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, no, I, it was. I, I could have been kinder about that whole thing, but um, uh, yeah, the uh, uh, so my 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 focus, uh, like I, I never really liked the post nineteenth century. Mm ceremonial magic stuff i thought that the golden dawn leadership and crowley and the whole thing that came out of that was was like twisted and i i actually have accused it of being a poisoned well and that the the tomb of Ro- christian rosenkreutz is a is a poisoned well because <laughs> it creates all these crazy people you know like yeah. I, I mean i could name names but i mean everybody knows that you could you can think of several golden yeah. dawn leaders who've melted down over the years but the fact is is it's a very healthy system that is very effective for people and i have i have based a lot of that rhetoric on you know a couple assholes here and there but um, i'm sorry i'll try not to cuss but a couple of a couple of bad actors here and there but they you know i, I try I, they 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 really poisoned my opinion of it but then yeah. I, get, I met people who were actually experiencing it and doing the work and it turns out they're quiet the ones that do the work are quiet and they yeah do the work in silence. They keep to talk or they actually believe in the four, fourth power of the Sphinx. And, and it, it's very effective. And Thelema is very effective for people who don't play the games and don't get involved in the drama. And the OTO is a wonderful organization for people who actually treat it like a fraternal organization and not like a, a personal ego uh, trip. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it, it's a lot of, a lot of these things, they, what you bring to the table is what you get out of it. And, and occultism amplifies everything, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, speaking of amplifying things, I found, I found in the Agrippa stuff that, that the, um, there's the fourth book of occult philosophy and, uh, Trithemius's art of drawing spirits into crystals Mm -hmm. is, so the art of drawing spirits into crystals is the easiest, um, uh, uh, conjuration right on the planet <laughs> it is like i've noticed and, that a lot of it's like even in like the theurgia goetia and all the, all the levetron look like most of it's just like rips off like the steganographia and everything so which is all goes back to his original scrying methods right yeah 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 and so the um yeah so so this is it's probably spurious it was probably a, a, a spurlock or whatever it, it's probably a, a a, a it wasn't really by him but he but yeah so i was actually it was through the steganographia that i found um the art of drawing spirits into crystals because i mm. i was looking for a simple way of doing angel magic i, I wanted to do nokian i'm like enokian sure oh. yeah. and then there's like all that math and <laughs> look at all like, those tables yeah, well, these one of those weird people like 
<laughs> he has like a weird reputation i found like people really love him and then i like i was obsessed with d for a little while i went and got like all his diaries it was great and then the more i like his system is really great it's really interesting and there's a lot of math involved and everything like that but like what i learned about d as a person and like his relationship with kelly and everything he's really fucking weird <laughs> yeah. like, as an individual yeah. he's so but like as such a strange person but and you start to see that in his system that, that yeah. he that he received and and you know he was it was actually his studying him and like how he interpreted what he received into the system that he made is, mm. is sort of how I kind of figured out how a lot of this magic stuff works. It was like, Oh my God. So he, he, he brought that, that mind to the table when he started working with these spirits, all he did was say, Hey, anybody I'm here. You know, that's basically their big invocation is by Christ. Don't hurt me, but I'm listening. You know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> anybody, hello. And it, it, it's like, they're doing a seance, you know, basically. Yeah. And and uh, and they start writing down all this stuff, and he interprets it, and he puts it into the system that is exactly what you'd expect somebody with his background to come up with. Mm. And I was like, and it's super effective, and they're like the most plastic of spirits to work with. They meet you where you're at, very powerful. Um, but but because I figured that out, I figured art of drawing spirits, seven right. spirits. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's a good place to start. I can get my feet wet without getting hurt. You know, angels are supposed to be easier. Yeah. Anyway, and it turned out to be so effective. I didn't need anything else. And that's what I use to this very day. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so that's my, my background and my sort of focus and um, hermetics and my approach to that. It's just, it's, it's uh, um, drawing spirits into crystals, the trithemian method of conjuration. I made an adaptation or two to that. Mm. And uh, then I just use the the stuff in Agrippa to sort of fuel my my work and trying to uh, the the skills of the number ten and skill of the number four uh, for understanding the different um, planetary planetary spirits to work with to do initiations and um, the elemental spirits to work with for initiations are all there in the table for, you know, so it's yeah. just, uh, it, it's just applying the stuff that's actually in there. And that's why, I, that's why I call what I'm doing now applied hermetics is because it's, mm. about, yeah, well, because you're, you're, yeah, you're applying it. Well, it's like, I suppose because there's the, there's a difference in there between, I guess what we can say is like the Agrippan kind of like the Chino style of like the Renaissance hermeticism and to a certain extent, like the like core, like, historical hermeticism like the greek hermetica for example like there's yeah. a bit of a difference of interpretation absolutely and i, I and and the, the greek hermeticism like I, I i've studied a lot of that like the corpus hermetica was going to mm. be my my bible and the, my interpretation yes. of neoplatonism <laughs> was based on on that that whole divine pymander thing it's mm. brilliant it, it lays it all out and like the newest mind and all this stuff um, but now nowadays I'm, I'm less inclined to think that it's great because it assumes that the newest mind is good. Right. And mm. um, uh, I was all for that. I was like, the newest mind is good and the universe is all good. And this is the best of all perfect worlds and possible worlds. And the only reason that it's bad is because we think it's bad. And, you know, and all that, I, I, I believed all that stuff. I thought that was true. And that, the, and I was trying to find ways to solve why people had a bad time Mm. in a in a good world and and if if the good was good and the, the ideas were good and pure and and ideal how does it get translated into such crap that we experience you know why why do people suffer why why is there bad mm. you know if 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 good is source then why is bad <laughs> so uh, <laughs> why is why is bad yeah that's, that's, <laughs> you can put it on a t-shirt why is I, bad exactly and bad is bad no bad 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 <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it, it's, it's the, the age old question that we're trying to solve with all, right. with all hermetic philosophies, right? Is why, why is it, how do we make the bad good instead? So mm -hmm. I've, I've, um, so I quit drinking <laughs> and when I quit okay. drinking, uh, like all of a sudden I realized that this is not actually the best of all possible worlds. <laughs> and I, went, I was like, it, it, so that, that Pollyanna outlook on things definitely required a constant intake of alcohol to support. And I, it, it, uh, <laughs> it, it alcohol is a solution, right? It dis dissolves things, right? Mm. And it's so dissolved. Oh, it's very, it's very hermetic dissolving things, I suppose. Yeah. In so dissolve way. my job, dissolve my relationship dissolved my <laughs> you know, it was yeah. like it was great yeah so it took it took a few years for everything to end up in the in the in the crapper but when, once it did I, I managed to like get my shit back together and and focus on stuff and and so my, my perspective has changed and, and I've I've moved on from sort of the corpus hermeticum approach to things because it 
it assumes that that the the good is good. And I've sort of moved. Um, have you heard of the Dervaini text, the Dervaini manuscript? Uh, like the like the, the, the Orphic ones. Yeah, yeah, the really old. I've heard, yeah, I've heard, I've, I've heard of them like briefly. I haven't I haven't like delved into them. I remember someone telling me that they're like really weird and confusing, and they mentioned I think the like the Furies or something at the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a great, it's a great romp. If you could get a hold of um, Al Benanke, are you a mm-hmm. member of Academia.edu? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, look up. Um, actually, I'm on there as Rufus Opus. Uh, look up okay. the, the things I'm reading. That's like the only things I'm reading lately. But <laughs> it, if you, if you can get a chance, read through Benanke's thing because he he lays out the Dervaini manuscript as if it were um, a whole theogony, right? The whole mm-hmm. creation myth of 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 ancient Greece that, that is like. Uh, extra to it's it's it touches on he it incorporates stuff from the hesiod it's the orphic mysteries but without um faunus as the as the the thing that gets eaten and and mm. re and but basically zeus becomes the demiurge and yeah uh, and he is not expected to be perfect and this is this he recreated the universe like after he destroyed Kronos. the the myth is that he recreated the universe in his own image and when he did that uh this is what we got right and here we are and if you look at at the orphic uh mysteries right like it, it says that dionysus was the was the the last king that was supposed to take zeus's place and then he was killed by the titans and he was mm-hmm. reborn and the the myth of resurrection and rebirth is all there in dionysus and all this yeah. stuff but um if you look at what Dionysus was the god of, he was a god of theater and uh, drunken revelry and yeah, the, the, the uh, mania and what kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, and sex and fun and hedonism and and a good time, ec- ecstatic mysteries mm. of life. And he was like, he was like all the, all of the the crazy shit of, of society, like the the fringe stuff that that at, when you get a culture sooner or later around the edges, you get. The wandering troops, you know, the mm. the in in ancient Greece it was the magia, right? And yeah. the Orphic traditions. They were they would basically they'd go from town to town and set up camp outside town. <laughs> they would sell crap at the edge of town. They were the carnival. They were the original carnies. Were the Orphic yeah. mystery traditions. <laughs> they would they would sell fried bread. They would have uh, tents. They would do divinations. They would have gods that they would conjure to tell you your future. This was it was a carnival. Yeah, it's it it like a full on carnival, like back like, like in the day. Yeah, the, the historians recorded the complaints about about how they the the magia would come to town. <laughs> it's like oh, the guys there it was like oh, the, the fucking parades back thing. <laughs> They're yeah. here again. It's that time of the month again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so anyway, the um, the Orphic traditions have a rich history of 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 being part of carnival and circus. So. Mm. Uh, it, yeah. Anyway, the the um, the idea that 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 uh, all of this stuff is under Dionysus, right? The, the things that Dionysus represents always comes up around the fringes of society, and it's it's a path to to that enlightenment and understanding that you get through ecstatic in, in mysteries like mushrooms and and stuff like and drugs, drunken revelry, yeah, it's and like any, any kind of, of like ecstatic state of consciousness or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all all of the stuff that Crowley was trying to say was actually good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, some, some of the tantric me- methods and you know all, all that stuff that really relies on the what we now know is like this huge endorphin release, mm-hmm. right? And and like it creates that physical set, set setting for your soul to have that mystical experience, right? Mm-hmm. So um, the 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 ecstatic things are the extremes of of what we can experience in society extreme happiness extreme pleasure extreme joy and they're they're all functions of society so i was thinking that like basically if if zeus the demiurge is at all of us and he has recreated existence in his own image and we are zeus and you're zeus and i'm zeus and we're basically we are manifesting the will of zeus zeus moira is is the Mm. fates the 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 will of zeus is is spun out by the moira the the three fates and and if we're manifesting zeus's will and we are zeus himself and the world itself is zeus manifest then that's the that's the all thing right but it's it's obviously got some bad in it and 
Uh, we've got the Dionysian revelries, the ecstatic mysteries that we have a society that's going on to 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 in this backdrop that we're playing out our our lives in. And if you look at it as a method of, uh, if you look back at the great work of the Hermetic tradition and, and how we are trying to process ourselves from, uh, are you familiar with Will Moore's memes on Facebook? Vaguely. Yeah. Okay. He, he he makes this one meme every once in a while. It's uh, you, you are excrement, but you can be gold. And it's usually a picture of like Patrick Star turning into <laughs> gold or something like that. But like, but like that's the that's the hermetic path. Is you are mm. you are crap, but you can be something pure. Yeah. If only yeah. It's like well, like I I, I, can't remember who, I can't remember who said it originally. Like I was reading um, you know, um, Walter Hanegraaff, the Hermetic Institute in Amsterdam. Okay, I, I thought that sounded familiar. Yeah, he, he's like, he like, uh, what is it? I have, I have this book here. What's, what's, what's his exact title? The Professor of History of Hermetic Philosophy at University of Amsterdam. It's, and he like, he he just got a new book out recently. Um, and it's it's amazing. It's a typical academic book as well. So it's like a hundred bucks to get. It's ridiculous. <laughs> academic texts are ridiculously expensive. Um, right. But he he talks about this, uh, like, worldview of this cosmology in, I think it's called Postmetic 13, uh, where like when we incarnate initially will we come down sort of by the planetary spheres and we take on portions of each of their energies and all that kind of thing um at the exact moment because like our birth is an exact moment in space and time you know mm-hmm. uh which is what's represented by the astrology chart or the natal chart or that kind of thing uh but the second that we're born and we incarnate again a pipe part and this is part of the reason for suffering and you know the reflection of the good and all that kind of thing the second that we incarnate, all the daimons and the, and the spirits that are associated with those parts of the zodiacs like rush in and they possess parts of the body effectively. Um, mm. And they, you know, like they're the things that are responsible for like the lust and the passions and the, the issues that we're having. It's, it's the daimons. So then through this kind of contemplative practice and hermetic practice and stuff, you undergo this kind of like exorcism. And like, I, I think it's like Tart is like the, the student in there. Like he, he like in Corpse 13, he's undergoing this huge exorcism. Uh, and he's kind of reborn eventually he like takes on a new name and all that kind of thing um but like that's the whole like sort of explanatory framework for suffering mm-hmm. and evil in that we're all constantly possessed by diamond right. in right. some you, capacity right which is the exact same thing yeah fundamentally there's some problem that we're trying to solve mm. right that, that's that's sol- solve a coagula right we're, we're trying to right. solve it's, it's that. the alchemical formula yeah 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 so so yeah and and that sounds Right. So, yeah. So whether it's the diamonds possession at the at the moment of incarnation or or Zeus's whatever uh, his his immaturity, yeah. um, it, it's it's through it's through society and through the ecstatic mysteries. I think that Zeus is purifying himself, and we are society mm. is the great work of Zeus. Right. So the process of all of us manifesting in our lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, mm-hmm. the reason we're trying to improve things and, and increase our, uh, our our continuous improvement and accomplish the great work as uh, for ourselves and bodhisattvas for all of humanity. You know, it, the reason that, that there's this drive is because we're trying to solve the problem of evil. Mm. Right. And we are we are Zeus's attempt to figure out how to create a universe that is not corrupt like mm. this is a this is an amazing piece of work the the machinery of this universe mm. the 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 technology the science the math the the chemistry that has to happen for a universe to exist yeah it's is, so exact and stuff yeah ooh, i couldn't do it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That. i don't want to i don't want to be a, i don't want to be a god if that's what it has to do yeah it's like, it's i tried i'm not gonna lie i tried and i'm nothing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And if I could, I would, I would definitely do it, but, yeah. but no, I mean, I can't. So, but no, I mean, so kudos, kudos for what, what he's done. This is yeah, fair, fair, fair play to Zeus, man. Like, yeah. And like, we're, we're at a point now where we can, we have the luxury of trying to figure out how to, how to get rid of evil now, you know, evil mm-hmm. is something that we can address and it's not something you can address when you're just trying to create a, a plateau where you can have a play, you know, and it took four and a half billion years for us to get to a point where we could even get 
to a planet that had all the things we needed to start this passion play. And yeah. this, and so I see our lives as, as the passion play and the great work as our divine mission. And we work on ourselves and small because we are the macrocosm, you know, the, the great work that we're doing is also the great work of the micro of the macrocosm of God. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm at today with all that stuff. And I think, I think it's through, through conjuring angels and demons and all the stuff that you learn about in in the 16th century grimoires, I think it's through that that the that the great work is accomplished. You 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 do magic for silly things like getting a job or or getting the favor of your, this girl that you really want to love you, and it creates drama. <laughs> it creates <laughs> situations that you have to walk through and experience. And yeah. in those situations, you have the opportunity to choose to do good or to do evil. And to pursue things that you think are going to be good and it turns out to be evil instead. And you and you get to understand more about, about that. And then you you learn to be a better person and you do, do do things better in a different way next time. And so, and it's like all this stuff works together, but all we end up with at the end of the day are these memories. Mm. You know? So it's like it's if if all you get out of life is, is this memory, then you know, what exactly is the point? And all, all I can think to do is project what I can experience onto, onto the macrocosm. I think, I feel like the only thing that makes sense is if we're trying to actually fix this problem, because that's, because I look around and I see how terrible we are and what we've done to this beautiful place. And, mm. and it's just, it's overwhelming. And if yeah. I, if I don't, <laughs> if I don't think that we're trying to do something better, if it's not for some purpose, then I mean, and it could just be like, I could just be deceiving myself because it's hard. Otherwise there's nothing, right? It's just nihilism. Yeah. But regardless, my, 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 de- my self-deception provides me with avenues to at least feel like I'm making the world a better place. So Yeah. So it, it, it works. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, and this is, this is the problem like I found with, like, I, I remember when I, I'm on one of my last podcasts, I was talking to Christopher Warnock about this. And it's like the challenge of like, uh, I guess what's the way of putting it? Like bringing kind of like academic or scholarship, like rigorous, like methodic, like method methodologies to occult work, rather than mm-hmm. sort of going into the kind of you know new agey kind of everyone can be everything everywhere, you know. But there needs to be some kind of methodological way of going about things. But the problem you have is most of modern academia it has atheistic materialism as as its bedrock, so it doesn't really care about magic you know this is the problem we have with the hermetica where it's like a lot of the like philosophical quote-unquote hermetica are translated and they just ignore a lot of the technical kind of magical stuff because you know it's magic they don't care it's not real um and so you need to be approaching it but the like the academic thing inevitably leads to nihilism as as a whole because there's no like there's no incentive to do good ultimately if if all of us kind of just burn out and do nothing here you know and we go into oblivion and that's it there's not really much purpose. Even if you create the purpose, it's an it's an indefinite purpose. So there's no mm-hmm. there's no like lasting point to anything. <laughs> right. Except except the thing about nihilism is is if you actually if you actually value yourself, if you think mm-hmm. that you're this life is damn special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's the other side of it. Yeah, if you, if you can weave a little narcissism in, <laughs> you just gotta, you just gotta like balance your mental illness out with your nihilism, so that it, mm. it turns you. Well, I think that's pretty well like Nietzsche did as well. I think I, I've often heard people say that he used like philosophy as a substitute for therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do, and to this yeah. very day. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that, like, that, well, not, I think like, it, it can be good. <laughs> like I like don't be wrong. Like I've I've found. A hell of a lot of like good personal growth in Plato and all oh, that sure. thing, and all that kind of thing. Like, it's, it's help, it does help mental health. You know, I think that's oh, yeah. what it does. Uh, yeah, Porphyry. Um, so I was reading Porphyry's introduction to the Enneads because I was mm-hmm. trying to trying to find. I was actually re- reviewing all the stuff around the Corpus Hermeticum because I. Uh, I'm trying to like balance out the stuff in the Dervaini manuscript versus the good. And I'm like trying to figure out what the argument was for the good. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that was Plotinus, right? I, I know yeah. it was in Timaeus. Timaeus argues for the good. Yeah, I think it's originally in the Timaeus is like where the, the idea of like a, a universal good comes from. But it's the, like the good is synonymous with, I can't remember if, if it's the, the good is synonymous with good, with God or in general, it's like, the good is also synonymous with the demiurge in a certain manner of speaking, because the demiurge yeah. is apparently looking to something else. But then it's like it's a weird thing because the the Timaeus, the demiurge is a positive entity. Like it's not like a right. negative thing in sense, and like in the Diverni thing where it's like the 
Zeus is the demiurge and it's kind of he's making up things or in the Gnostic interpretations where it's kind of Yahweh or whatever in right. Timaeus it's quite a positive force because he's right. looking towards God for the forms and that's what I, that's what I thought was great about Timaeus and and mm. uh, Plotinus and and the Aeneids where they talk about how we're like how the good mingled us with the star stuff and and turned mm. us into you know and it was it was all wonderful stuff you know and, but uh but anyway, I, I was reading that introduction and, mm-hmm. and um, he talks about how, uh, 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 what's his name? Plotinus. Yeah. He, how Plotinus actually, uh, he would write the track dates from beginning to end. He had them entirely memorized. He never went back and reread where he was at. He couldn't, he couldn't spell. He was, he was barely literate. <laughs> he, he wrote, to, his handwriting was awful. He didn't punctuate properly. He had terrible grammar. Porphyry's complaining about all this because he had to go in and rewrite all of it. Yeah, all he was say, he's shit. the one. He's, he's the editor. So it's his job. But but he was like he would sit down and he would have the whole thing memorized. You could interrupt him in the middle of a thing and he would start talking to you and he would pick up right where he left off and finish the track date because he had it all memorized in his head before yeah. he started. And he was like one of those savants, right? And you and you look at him and today, like what would he be like today? But but he has a story of how he had his his uh, tutelary spirit mm. conjured. This Egyptian was going around. They were in Egypt and they were like, hey, you want to get your tutelary spirit conjured? And he was like, yeah, let's do it. So they had this thing. Right. And, and they go in and, and I guess it was a thing. And people uh, could just. Yeah. And they had these birds and, and they would release the birds and they would like conjure that they would conjure your head spirit or your deity, your tutelary spirit, your holy guardian angel. Right. Mm. And and. Then they would release the birds and they would interpret the the birds flight as your uh, and tell like you what the message with the omen or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll tell you all about your God based on how the birds fly. So they conjure this guy's spirit and it's so powerful. They conjure uh, the Plotinus's spirit. It's so powerful. This God shows up and, and, and it's to visible appearance. It's not just. Oh, so it's not, yeah, it's not just like random bird or also it's like an actual physical like it, it better be thing, right. Yeah. So so like the god is so awe inspiring that it, the guy that's supposed to release the birds panics and strangles the birds to death. So they never actually learn the name of the of the spirit. You don't know anything about it. Mm. They just know that it was so powerful that it was that it was just left everybody shaking. No. So and he said that that he kept that god in his mind. He contemplated that god day and night. And that's how he was able to do all these miraculous things. And when you think about like these hermetic practices, these contemplative practices of of getting your diamonds back into into good, right? Like yeah, like trans- these- it, well, it's alchemical, ultimately. Like right? it's transmuting them with the good. Like, like the idea is you have sort of like one of the twelve diamonds or whatever is is possessing you from the zodiac, and then each diamond has like a corresponding virtue or a corresponding good that you invoke and contemplate that like transmutes the diamond away from you effectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and see that that kind of thing, that that whole transformation thing, I think is what I'm focusing on today with mm-hmm. my work. So, like where where I want to go with things in in my present future, my present progressive, is I want to take that a concept of Zeus and the concept of us as like doing the great work for Zeus and putting that into practice for people and and helping people learn how to make money <laughs> with magic yeah like using because... yeah like using magic or whatever well yeah like it, it's it's the it's the building of the kingdom ultimately again this is like where, yeah, we, yeah. Can, where we can come in with the seven spheres stuff right but absolutely it's i like it, it makes me think of almost like my like you know like master's hierarchy of needs whatever like you need to have your essential like building but you have have your essential foundations for money and everything like that and it's like right this is where i think like well like if we're working with planets for example uh like doing any like celestial implications this is where i think people often go wrong with jupiter where they will immediately people will automatically like they'll default to jupiter and think oh well it's just like jupiter is just money so any mm-hmm. kind of jupiter work that i'm doing I, you know it's going to be giving me money but it's like jupiter is like in, if you if we go by sort of the hermetic or the traditional astrology jupiter is like it's reflecting that divine idea of justice and justice is everyone getting the thing that they like everyone like everyone's in the right place and getting what they need ultimately mm-hmm. it's like jupiter is abundance effectively and it's just, it just so happens that in modern society right now that abundance and that justice takes the form of finance because that's what we need to survive and have and grow and all that kind of thing in general right. So working with Jupiter, it, it invites that current of justice in rather than money itself. I think that's where people, I've often heard people go wrong with that. Um, it's health, health and wealth in the Orphic Hymns. And if you, if you look wealth, at what, yeah. if you look at health and wealth 
it's actually justice, <laughs> right? right. right. It, yeah, it, like it, just, justice is health and wealth. It's getting the like the, right. whatever you personally need, like for you. You know that that's the, right. the definition of, I guess, wealth. And wealth isn't just, just financial, yeah. but. Justice is supposed to be a benevolent. It's a, right. it's a benefic- beneficent, right? That mm. Jupiter is the is the greater beneficent, yeah. right? But where do we put it in modern in modern times? We put it all over in Mars, right? Mm. The malefic. So it's it, justice in modern in modern society is not a is not a good that we are granted. Right. It's, 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 the, it's yeah, a, like it's it's even evil, in like the court systems or whatever. Like it's like you're dispensing justice, and that's like you right. Think it, somebody it, is like getting you're forcing you're for, if justice in our society is something that is forced on someone because we're mm-hmm. basically a corrupt society. You know, right. justice to us is punishment. It's not fucking, it's not a mm. blessing of let us, let us get what we deserve. Let us get to what, what God wants us to have. Yeah. Well, 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 it's, the other, uh, it's the other thing as well. Like, what you said there real quick. It's like, oh, um, yeah, let us get what we deserve. It's mm-hmm. just, uh, we think like what we deserve is shit. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right. Well, we actually deserve us to get punished. Yeah. Because we because we know what assholes we really are. And so I don't, mm. you know, we know what we really wanted. What we really wanted was just to have good food, sex, and not have to go to work today. That, yeah. So what? That's not evil. That's not wrong. That's actually the reason you want that is so that you could do things that are good. You know, mm. like the thing is, is that once you actually have all that stuff, you have all this time to just build stuff to make other people's lives better. You can do that with your time. You can choose to do that once you have food, sex, and and a, a, a house, a car, and a job. That's what I tell everybody: you got to have a house, a car, and a job. You know, and that's what that's what that's what 16th century magic is good for. It's great. <laughs> it's really good for that. You know, you can conjure bune to get money. You know, uh, you do the talismans for favor, and people like you. You know, so that's what that's what I'm telling people about these days. Is just you know, the great work is the process of healing Zeus and the way that we do it as magicians, uh, the people that incarnate as magicians, we get to work with the invisible spirits, mm-hmm. right? We get to call, we, what, for whatever reason, we, when we call <laughs> those spirits answer us and we see their effects, whether it's all in our heads or whether we're crazy or whatever the fuck, who cares? Doesn't matter. We just, when we call the spirits, it seems like they work for us, right? Mm. And the most effective way I found to do that is to get their favor. You know, the the talismans of Venus and Jupiter are great from the greater key of Solomon, the ones that, that bless you. The um this the if you have a, a seven and four approach, you know, seven planets and four four elements, you know, as long as you have the representatives of those and a seal for each and a relationship with them, your magical practice is going to be great. You know, uh, I've been working with the seven winds from the Picatrix, the Mm. mirror of the seven winds. Uh, Warnock is actually the one that he's got a site, a page on his site where he talks about it. Yeah, I guess because he trans, he was like one of the first to translate the Picatrix, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he did the um he he did a mirror that he engraved. It was just like a glass mirror that mm. he would engrave at the proper time. And and basically you engrave it at a time when Jupiter is well aspected, and then you polish the mirror part when Venus is well aspected. So it's like, like a double, got, yeah, like a double thing. Mm. Yeah. And and uh, so you so you polish it and then and then you you smoke it in a smoke that's made out of your seven bodily fluids, right? <laughs> The, the seven of very pick a tricks yeah <laughs> it's very gross and i like so i was i was in quarantine i had uh it was when covid had just started sure and I, I had 15 days to, <laughs> to sit time, in, time the, indoors nothing else to do yeah, yeah time, time indoors stuck in a room and i had uh and it's, it says that you have to tie it from a bow above water so mm. I had a bottle of water and I got this branch that I made a tripod out of and I tied this mirror. I made this mirror out of paper and uh, I had a gum wrapper. <laughs> so I put polished the gum wrapper and I made this aluminum foil. Actually, where is it? It's uh, oh, it's actually it's out in the living room. I was using it, <laughs> um, but it turned out to be one of this really power. It's a powerful talisman. But yeah. I smoked it. I smoked it in the in my my fluids and well it was gross but but you do like four days of of this foul smelling thing and then or three days of this foul smelling thing and then, then four days of really good smelling uh suffumigations and it's just every morning you you do that but you're not supposed it doesn't say to say any prayers or anything i did the astropolis prayers um, i don't know mm. if you're familiar with those they were from uh 
it, it got popular in the Grimorum Verum. Mm. Uh, Jake Stratton Kent mentioned them somewhere, and then somebody else picked it up and ran with it, and one thing led to another, and and now the Astropolis prayers are 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 something. But anyway, it was popular at the time, so I I tried it, and <laughs> it seems so. to have been effective. Whatever. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, so the the winds I think are are I, they're probably my favorite spirit that I've ever worked with, you know, like in terms mm. of like initiatory experiences and stuff. Cause after having that mirror, I like, like there's definitely a, a before Picatrix mirror and after Picatrix right. mirror experience of life. And it's just af- afterwards, I just kind of know things like the, the winds. And this is true of the Alatory talisman and the key of Solomon too. Mm. If you get one of those uh, it's supposed to be good for translating and for ambassadors but it turns out that you just know things. You just mm. know things. You don't know why you know things. Yeah. You know, it, no, it, 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 like, I suppose it's like, it is a full translation in its own way, right? It's, it's very mercurial almost. You, like you, you are, mean, you're tra- you know, you're like the hermeneutic, right? You're like translating the information out. It's like translating itself in your mind or whatever. Right. It's like they're whispering it to you in ways and, and you're, you're understanding the meaning without understanding necessarily the words. And mm. and that's, that's basically what it is about every, everything. Right. Mm. So like, like I can be out in the woods and know how to get back to my car without being lost, you know? And it's like really convenient and, and you're, you're spatially more aware and you're, you, you, you find out secrets, things, things that people are trying to keep from you. They tell you for no apparent reason, you know, um, things that, that people are trying to keep from you. You hear about from people who they, who they, who they, shouldn't have known you know it's it's just it's all winds they're winds mm. and but but air touches everything between earth and sky right right so like everything that happens everything that anybody moves around in the air the wind spirits know and it seems like they communicate that to you so however all that works i don't know how it works i don't know mm. if there's actual spirits or if i'm psychic or whatever the heck maybe it's all in my head no. but it, it's it's super but it was uh, that's the thing it feels like it does. <laughs> right. So that, that, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. So it's different there between like, I don't know, causation or whatever, like whatever. It is. But I, mean, I don't know. Like, would you, what, what would you, what do you think the winds are then? Are they, would you say they're their own like class of spirit or would you just say they're like air, air, air like air elementals or whatever? I, I definitely think they're aerial spirits. So there's, mm-hmm. uh, there is an argument that all the spirits that we can conjure are aerial, even though yeah. we call them terrestrial and, 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 uh, I guess because they come through the air and stuff, yeah, in the first place. So there is some element of them that would be aerial, yeah. Yeah, that you can't communicate without air. Mm. So that, that I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really care to be honest. I, I feel like if 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 they're all air spirits, but they, some of them like to pretend like they're earth spirits, it doesn't make much sense. So no. I mean, it feels like maybe there are earth spirits and. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever yeah. but but to me it's always about the practical experience of it you know what are you going to do with it with your magical knowledge what what, what benefit it you know paul's thing in, in the bible what what a benefit to know the to speak in the tongues of of angels if i have not love you know if mm. i don't if i it, what, what good is all this stuff if i can't have a house a car and a job if i can't kiss my wife at night and and you know it, what yeah you know it, it, you gotta you gotta have a good quality of life i think and yeah. and you can figure out you can figure out right from wrong in luxury just as much as you can in yeah. poor <laughs> situations so uh, yeah well it, 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 there's a point i think that it comes like even when you're engaging like luxury or you're engaging any of the passions like i don't know there is a point i don't know whether it's the justice inside of us or whatever it is but there's a point where it does feel like too much and you're like that, like the, the way it comes in you're like okay I, I need to do something else. You know, it's like, it's all those weird things. Like I, I always purify before ritual, just standard. It's like, I, it's so funny when I see it. Like, even if I, even if I'm doing like a really like minor ritual, right. Even if it's just like basic divination or something like that, I've noticed like, if I don't purify before ritual, like it feels, there's something about it that just feels off. Like it feels like icky and whatever I'm doing, if I don't purify my, I don't, I feel like I shouldn't be here in some capacity like well, if, if i don't purify before ritual and whatever it is like the purification can be simple like it's like, i make like kernels to like the greek lustral water with like bay leaf and everything like that to like mm. wash my hands or whatever and that's we fine actually... it's something simple but even then if i don't do it i still feel impure when i approach ritual you know it's an, it's an interesting dynamic but yeah you, you have made me what is it you've washed me and made me pure you've 
And oh, the, the biblical, it's like, what are they, yeah, like, wash me with hyssop and I'll be cleansed. Yeah. yeah. Was it as white as snow, I think it is. White as snow, yeah, something white as snow and hyssop. Yeah, I, I got a, uh, it's funny, my, my wife was just talking about lustral water the other day. She's like, we got to get some lustral water. Why do we need lustral water? <laughs> okay. But apparently it's a thing. It's a real thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, um, well, I mean, like, even, even holy water is effectively lustral water. It's just, it's like prayed and sprinkled mm-hmm. with salt, whatever it is. Like, the, the, even the Greeks and the hermeticists had it in their kind of their kreto, right? So they're like, they're like mixing bowl or whatever. If we use the hermetic analogy, they would have it at the entrance to all the temples. Cause like, like the idea is you can't, you can't bring, Sort of the, the I mean the word they use is miasma, right? So the pollution things from general life or everything else. You can't bring that into ritual because you're transcending the state. You're bringing something else in. So I don't know like there's a people like Stephen Skinner argue that there's like a whole smell element to spirits that because spirits are invoked by incense, they're affected by smell. And what kind Absolutely, of thing as well. I I agree. Yeah, and it's I think like, so. but but that like, goes back to the aerial spirits, right? So. Well, this is the thing, right? As well, because the smell moves through the air, so it would affect the air. Well, like, and this is an interesting point. Now that I'm thinking about it, like maybe part of the reason that they're affected by it is if they're aerial and the smell is also aerial. There's like some kind of like weird merging that goes on that like affects mm-hmm. them or whatever. Like the basic idea is that you don't just want to cleanse the space; you want to make yourself actively desirable to the spirit, and that's what the incensing and the perfumes are, or like the wearing of the right robes or the colors or the or whatever. You want to make the space not only presentable, but actually welcoming and enticing to the spirit that then makes it come effectively. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's an extrapolation, I think, on Crowley's. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, because yeah, yeah, like I always, I don't know, I struggle with Crowley a bit just because of how much he likes to psychologize stuff. Like I, I'm not the biggest fan of the whole like spirits are in your head model. Well, he's like, he's an atheist. Right. See, that's, the, that's the thing is that people don't understand that Crowley was an atheist. He didn't believe any of that stuff. It was all a metaphor for trapping, mm. mapping out the mind of, of a human being. And mm. he believed that we could do things with magical powers, with these things that appeared as spirits, but that it was probably some function of, of the mind that we don't understand. Yeah. You know, and, and I was like, it, and that's one of the reasons I, I, have no problem being an ex OTO member <laughs> is because at the end of the day, they don't believe that they don't believe in a higher power. Mm-hmm. There is no God, but man. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. We actually, I, mean, I think his, his like famous one is he says like the goetic spirits are like, or like the 72 of them are like, like corresponding to 72 parts of the brain or whatever. And I was like, I don't know. Like I, I could, I could maybe see like if you if you were to say like mind or whatever, I could maybe see that in some capacity, but not brain. That's like the, phys- the physical version. I'm like, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be. Um, and, but and, and, it, it, it's assuming that there's an actual structure and order to the Goetia that there is not. Right. So yeah, like the so Goetia like, is like I don't know. I'm. I know, I, I've I've kind of gotten I've almost been cancelled like once or twice at this point where like for, for practically dissing on the Goetia or, like kind of like just saying it's not as good as it should like everyone thinks it is uh, uh, yeah it's well, really not super I, great. so if you're talking about the Lamegatons Goetia the actual mm-hmm. grimoire I agree with you 100 percent yeah it is. Oh yeah, the other ones are great, like the Theagia and the, the Paulina. Right, like, right, they're all yeah. great because they're all Trevemius. Like that's yeah. brilliant. I love that stuff. Uh, well, like the actual the, Goetia itself is like yeah. the, the the true grimoire. If you get into the true grimoire and the spirits of that, like that that the so Jay Stratton Kent was yeah. he, he's a, I I love what he did for for the occult. I think yeah. That his yeah, I think he's done he's done amazing stuff for it. Yeah. yeah, he's a blessing. And and what we mean by Goetia today is completely different than just right. what we meant. 10 years ago or whatever you know right so that i think is important to keep in mind so say saying saying the goetia is for children is mm-hmm. true you know it's yeah. it's a grimoire it's a grammar it's a, it's a place for people to experiment and play without hurting themselves because you can't really do much with the spirits of the Lamegatons Goetia, especially in the system as it's presented, you can mm-hmm. barely even conjure half of them because it, it, like from the descriptions of the spirits, you know that you're, you only have half the equipment, Yeah, you know? And it's like, so, so it's like this, the system itself is for people to practice. It's, it's literally a grammar. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not actual magic. Actual magic is you, you read Agrippa, you study the tables, you learn the names of the spirits, you use the 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 art of drawing spirits into crystals to analyze the spirit, you 
gather its seal, you gather its name, its attributes, its timings, its offerings, and then you work with it as a familiar spirit to help shape the world according to your will to manifest the 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 fiat of your of your piece of Zeus's divine fate on the planet, mm. right? Mm. But anyway, that's that's what real magic would be, in my opinion. But but the point of it is is you know like in um you know how like in, uh, in Thurgia it's to connect with the divine, right? Mm. You're supposed to become one with God again. Yeah, but the, the entire thing itself is it, the, the translation is divine work, right? Like that's the entire point of it. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah, but it's coming back, right? And I think that's mm. a part of hermetics that I I think people lose sight of is is we you know so much of the focus of the golden dawn people that get on my nerves is is on attainment and transcendence and getting enlightenment or the western equivalent of enlightenment without like doing anything to be better to their fellow humans without being like decent to one another uh without learning how to communicate in a kind way to each other um you know how how to get through a month without having somebody be offended at something that you said on facebook to the point where you ha- are having a magical war <laughs> with them because of something yep. they said on a blog post no you know i mean this this is not this is not what it's for I, it, to me it it should be it should be something that's that's creating a reasonable healthy human being that's better able to deal with the the real life stra- stress and drama you know mm-hmm. this drama <laughs> the, the stress and drama of life that we have to deal with and and deal with it well but also like have access to these invisible spirits and be working towards your own great work right you know like mm-hmm. i i think i have a concept of what my great work is i like to tell people what to do <laughs> I'm good sure. at it. I think I'm smarter than the average bear when it comes to uh making connections between things that don't seem to be connected. You know, yeah. like I've got that Mercury um trait where where yeah. where, where, where the Hodians like to make connections. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say I think like from what from what I've seen, like I've looked at like the natal charts of a lot of like the big magicians, like whether it's Agrippa or Facino or anyone like that like in the past, and like the biggest pattern I can see with people who go into magic is they have like very well dignified Mercury or like crazy strong Saturn energy. Uh, like I think Ficino has like a ridiculously strong, like well aspected Saturn. Um, and yeah. like Saturn is, it's like there was, there's a weird one with this. Like I, I, I think, I think it's Ficino that says this. I think it's the three books of life. Um, where he's like, whereas we usually think, like the planet for like hardcore scholars is Mercury. It's actually Saturn. And that's part like Saturn is also like it rules melancholia and depression, which is why a lot of us who are like a major into the scholastic stuff and like major into occultism are usually freaking depressed all the time because we're really, really Saturnian. Well, and also uh, the reason that that we know about the, the great academics who are Saturnian is because they are Saturnian. And yeah. the, the the great academics who are mercurial, they never write their shit down. Yeah. <laughs> you know? well, this, is, this is the nature of Mercury as well, because Mercury is like, it's such like a floaty kind of like here and there planet. It kind of it's very immutable. It takes on the form of whatever thing it does. I think this is um it's like I kind of if if, it, like, if you look into any of the Renaissance astrologers, I think it's like William Lilly, or like William Lilly is a more early modern, but people like that. Um he's a, he like he makes this argument like Mercury, because like you usually assign like different genders or, or sexes or anything to the planet. So like, yeah, Mercury is like a mutable planet because it basically takes on like the gender or the aspect of whatever planet it's conjunct at any particular right. time because it's so yeah. mutable, or whatever. Um so that kind of explains it, you know, it's like I know it's it's like it, it's that it's that trickster energy as well. I think where like they, you don't write anything down, whereas it's like the the hard hitting scholars are all Saturnian, which is really funny. But that also means that we open ourselves up to being fucking depressed by it all the time because <laughs> it's where yeah. you are. But I mean, that's why like Agrippo, not Agrippo, um, Facino writes like the three books of life as an antidote to that kind of Saturnian melancholy, essentially. So like if you work with that astrological system, it's a way to kind of mitigate that yeah. depression other than that comes from saturn at least as far as he was concerned but uh it's an interesting like his stuff is really like fashido is so interesting to me like his like he's the main guy i focus on for like reconstructing hermetic stock like he translated the first 14 of the hermetica right and like so he's kind of in it but like, he didn't really like i don't know because like 
there's been some debate over how well he did it, hasn't there? Because like he his Latin isn't super great. But well, his Latin's good, but like, it's like yeah, like his Latin's okay, but like he doesn't translate stuff exactly as you might think he does. Like it's an interesting thing. But yeah, I'm not familiar with with Ficino the way you are, but it's a, it's fascinating to see that you yeah. spent so much time with him. You, you know him, you know him pretty well. I can tell you, you know, like an friend. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm. I don't know, like I'm. I'm in the middle of everything with it. Like I'm going because I'm like where I'm at in my practice right now is I'm trying to reconstruct practical Greek hermetica. Like I think we have enough of the Renaissance hermetica, where whether it's Agrippa, Ficino, anything like that, to reconstruct Renaissance hermeticism mm-hmm. in terms of practice. But oh. in terms of reconstructing a practice from the Corpus Hermeticum or like the Stobaean fragments or like the historical Greek hermetica. I like that requires a bit more scholarship and a bit more work to start reconstructing right. practical stuff from that end of it. And that's kind of where I'm coming at it from. Like, I want to reconstruct practice of ancient Hermetica as and then see yeah. how much, how well it like overlaps with the Renaissance Hermetica as well. That's kind of what I'm up to right now. But I, was, I that's fascinating stuff. I I'm all for that. Like uh so uh that like, it's the the porphyry thing that we were talking about earlier. Right, like, exactly. We were just talking about so that that kind of reconstructing that kind of practice, like like we know that we know that Porphyry said that that uh, Plotinus was he kept his mind always on that deity, hmm. right? So that deity that they that they had evoked to to current practice, he said he kept part of his mind was always in communion with that deity. So what do we know that, about his practice then? We know that that like all right, Krishna's for example today, you know they're always in communion with their with their mantra, hmm. like some they're, they're is, singing their things and it helps them connect, yeah. Right. And and so that's a method of always being connected to that divine spirit. So what is your what is your mantra for your spirit? You know, mm. what's your, what's your holy guardian angel's name? Right. So I've got I've got what I think the name of my holy guardian angel is. And I contemplate that. And if I think about that while I'm while I'm doing tarot card readings, I, I understand the images better. Right. So mm. it's like it's like that 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 practice of the first century hermeticists was was probably something like yeah it's yeah yeah it's it's effectively her, like the holy or like the agatha diamond holy demon right right or the holy diamond right where you're invoking that higher genus or whatever it is yeah 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 your logos you're you're getting in touch with with that right. with that logos workman thing right so yeah so it's it's so that's and and then have, have you found any practices so like you know yamblicus talks about um and on the mysteries, he talks about some of the things they do with Santhamata and and mm. talismans and addressing. And it sounds like taking on God forms, right? But yeah. like, I never, I never, I've never been able to wrap my mind around what the actual practices are. Have you? How are you gonna? How are you gonna be able to reconstruct the? Yeah, it's, it, it's like uh, it's it's a horrible because like Iamblichus is also a weird one um, because his his understanding of theurgy is so radically different from the other Neoplatonists because he basically just ritualized the whole thing. But the thing about it that's really, really cool with the Amblichus is that he's like largely actually pretty hermetic. Like he's Neoplatonist in a manner of speaking, but he's actually more, I would argue he's more hermeticist than mm-hmm. Neoplatonist. Uh, Cause there are really kind of like three, I don't know, what, what should we call them? Like three active people in lay antiquity from what I can see who were, like who we can act, like actively identify by a practice or whatever as like historical hermeticists. One of them's Iamblichus, because there are enough like sections in on the mysteries to talk about Hermes and hermetic practice for me to say, yeah, he's probably practicing some kind of hermetic liturgy or whatever. Um, I think Zosimos of Panopolis, or the first like the alchemist, was is very clearly hermetic. He he mentions Poimandres as well. Actually, he actually like and he's writing letters to another one who is a girl. Uh, what's her name? Theo something, Theo Sorbia or Theo Sibia, something like that. I can't remember what her name is. Um, she's like one of his friend or like one of his students, something like that. And he's writing letters to her. And he's like telling her to like invoke Poimandres and everything in these alchemical letters. Like clearly he's a hermeticist in some kind oh, of way. Um, but like they're like the top three. So like Iamblichus, Zosimos, and Theo Sorbia are like your three historical like living hermeticists that we can actively link to the tradition. Um, so it's looking at any of the kind of rituals that they talk about effectively and then working it back or like reconstructing it back. Because like, although I'm at least right now, because I'm writing a book on it right now, basically, or I'm gonna I'm gonna publish sort of a like a hermetica, I don't know, hermetica practica, or something like that, like practical hermeticism kind of like, yeah. or like ancient a- stuff. Applied hermetics, yeah. You know, yeah no, I, I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um 
And the thing with it that's like really cool, like where I'm kind of starting my journey effectively with it, like my my exploration, is like I have to go back to the original Greek a little bit to get the prayers right. But like stuff like the Corpus Americum and even the stuff in the Nakamari Library, so the Gnostic stuff, like it contains prayers and it contains references to rituals. Like there's the, um, I think it's like even in the Asclepius, like towards the end of the Asclepius, um, there it, it describes a ritual before the prayer of Thanksgiving. It's like, okay, rise at sunrise, face south with the sun or whatever, say this prayer to sort of the higher God. But it's, it's like it's like a hermetic version of like Liba, like Liba Resh or Liba Samek or whatever. You know, it's like, it's like it's kind of sun salutation, but there's like an actual historical hermetic version of it. And then also in the Nagamari Library, we have what is it, this called the Discourse of the Eighth and Ninth, uh, which is kind of like the you know the fancy kind of initiation version, and they have the vowel sounds and everything that you're chanting. Um, and as far as I can tell, I haven't seen many people do this yet, but it's really interesting. Like I have a feeling that each of the what do you call it? Like each of the vowels is it corresponds to one of the notes in the musical scale on the on the Pythagorean oh, yeah. scale. Absolutely. Um, and, and then, if you uh, sort of you can chant them at different notes at different frequencies or whatever, and it will create an altered state of consciousness. So I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out like what that ritual was. I'm like, hmm. I'm, I, I'm doing a lot of experimentation with it, but it's really I'm getting some weird results with it. But it's fun. yeah, yeah. And then uh, so the, if you can figure out the planetary correspondences for the vowels too, I think that those are no. Yeah. But then you can do then you can do planetary. Yeah, you could do planetary magic and like by like vibrating, yeah, know, just by humming planet or something, yeah, right into the into the airs. So yeah, <laughs> just whistle up a storm. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> but isn't that like how the cunning people do do it? So uh, like well, uh, they small... do. I think they yeah, but, but they do like one of the things I noticed. I think this is in like it might be like Cornish witchcraft. I'm trying to remember because I remember reading like uh, was it like Gemma Gary's books on traditional witchcraft, like the like, whole original like Troy Esoterica stuff. Um, and she talks a lot about like the word, like, you know how like, in the upper mind they have the word squares and that kind mm-hmm. of thing. She, there, are, there are versions of those in like the cunning craft, but it's weird. You kind of like whisper divine names over the squares and then like mm-hmm. the act of whispering like imparts it through the air into the square right. that then activates the square. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a, there's like, I, I got really wrapped around how breath is, is the name yeah. That we have for spirit like every mm. every every word for spirit demon yeah it's like in every know. language as well it's not it's yeah. not even just like greek and latin it's like even even like languages that are ridiculously far i feel like i think um like one of the like australian aboriginal languages as well mm. is it's the same thing like the word they use for breath is the same right. word they use for soul or spirit yeah and and basque and like all, all the the oldest languages it's all the same yeah, yeah. and it's all breath and it's like and and uh, Zeus being a sky god, right, and Uranus being the sky itself, you know, and it, mm. it's very, it's very much uh, in, in the Bible. It talks about in, in whom we live and breathe and have our being, you know. It, it's it's very much that that mm. all thing kind of. Anyway, I, I don't remember where I was going with that. I had a <laughs> I, I had a point, but I don't remember. Uh, so, have you? Um, I'm curious. Have you in your in your in your studies? Have you found a way to actually practically start doing that? That kind of uh, like finding ways to turn that that early the practice? the um, the vowel sounds. You mean? Well, or or any of the the contemplation exercises. Like, have you found a way to practically use it to manipulate your life? Yeah. <sighs> It's well, so so at the moment, most of my most of my practice at the moment is 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 also is also in Renaissance Hermeticism. So it's it's still like talismans and it's like Facino or Griffin talismans, all that kind of thing. Um but I'm I have had some interesting results where it's like like it's a weird thing. I'm mostly using the vowel sounds at the moment, and that's like what's forming a lot of the main reconstruction. Because uh, like vowel sounds also appear like throughout the PGM as well, like big mm-hmm. magical inquiry, oh, yeah. like all over the place. So like, they're very clearly kind of you know very potent towards magic. They are caught at like magic, um, and I can't remember. I'm, I think I, I think it actually is the Amblicus that talks about this. Like he says that like the reason the vowel sounds are used so much is that they are pure sounds. Like they're like if you think, if we take the assumption that um, you know the word or god or whatever it is creates reality through logos through speech. It's like mm-hmm. the core component of speech is the vowel, right? They're the pure sound. Right. So like Amrikas kind of divides it into like you have seven vowels, which are the purest forms. Then you've got semi-vowels or like half vowels, which are like less pure. And then you've got the consonants, which is kind of like reflections of the vowels, basically. Um, so that's why vowels are used in like the ch- chanted vowels, whatever, are 
used in ritual so much because they are like the purest like reflections of the logos basically and obviously one of them each one corresponds to one of the planets and that kind of thing um so it, like my whole thing so far has been a process of like going through the pgm to find out like which vowels appear most commonly with which gods and it's like that guy thing because like like you have hymns to gods like Selene or whatever is the moon helios is the sun and each each of them you'll generally find they'll have like certain vowels show up more frequently attached to different gods and then because those gods are planets you can kind of figure out what the planet is that corresponds with the note or the vowel that kind of thing and then you can kind of chant them that kind of thing so i have had good success with even if i'm just doing general planetary conjurations uh, a lot of the time i will chant or like go through a series of chanting the vowels associated with the planet uh usually in the same order that comes up in the the discourse of the eighth and ninth i haven't quite been able to figure out what the divine name is because there's a name before it i think it's like, it's like zoxafazos or something like that in the discourse like and that's like the name appears before the vowels i haven't quite figured out what that means yet uh it might just be like a random hermetic name for god or some kind of weird greek version or something but um but I have, like, it does, my talisman stuff has been pretty powerful recently with it. And it, I, I don't know yet. I haven't tested it enough to figure out if incorporating, like, the hermetic vowel system or any of that is a direct, like, like you know, influence on it. Like, whether it's made it more powerful or if like, my talismans in general are just more powerful. Are you chanting the are you chanting the vowel sounds over the talismans so as you consecrate them? Yeah. So it's effectively if you think I I I will carve the talisman at the right time. And like one of the things I did is I did a YouTube video about this recently about making talismans with all the elections and that kind of thing. Um but I also got like a penning like a Dremel engraver basically like a, like a like an electric engraver that I can like actually engrave on materials with. Um so I've been doing that aside from paper talismans because like, I I kind of switch between paper talismans and and like actual like material talismans mainly because yeah. like paper is it has a bit of like less of a half life essentially um, so that's like I'm going more with like actual materials but generally what I'll do I'll get I'll wait for the astrological time I like check all my charts and everything I'll carve it uh, I'll set the incense smoke kind of going uh, and I'll sort of you know move it through the incense it's a fumigator in general probably say some divine name associated with the planet and then i will end it off by chanting it over like or chanting the vowels over the thing probably or like my theory with it and again this is this goes back to the aerial spirits like rather than yeah now i'm thinking about it i'm trying to unpack it but it's like rather than chanting it into the talisman i chant it into the incense because then the vibration the sound uh-huh. charges the incense which is the air and then the incense right. is kind of extra charged for then charging the talisman if that makes right. sense yeah uh, and then but it's still the spirit that's actually embodying the talisman then, right? Yeah, so you're still cutting down, but it's like at the same time, I guess you can conceptualize it as like, if you think that each vowel and each note you sing the vowel at is associated with the planet and the planetary devil, the spirit, you're imparting sort of the logos of that planet yeah. into the incense smoke that then also charges the talisman as well. So it kind of, it's like, it's creating like a nicer kind of like paved, like yellow brick road into right, the husband, like to bring yeah. the spirit in, basically. It, it, it's okay. So you're you're recreating the path of the descent of man and Pymander, right? Yeah, so you, right. And you're going through each of the seven planets, and like, right. and, five, and you're bestowing you're bestowing a portion of the powers of the, of the yeah, spirits that's a good upon, way, yeah, that's upon a good your way, spirit yeah. as it's coming. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, that's you, that's yeah. really great. That's a, an, yeah. Really it's, really I'm experimenting with it. It's like and like because the way I, like Walter what Walter Hanagar talks about. The, like the discourse of the eighth and ninth in one of his new books. I can't remember which one. I, which one. I think it's the most recent one. Uh, um, but like he talks about it, it's like it was probably part of like a hermetic initiation ritual, effectively. And you could because they they talk about like ritual embraces and all this kind of thing. Um, and you think like what probably happens is it's like there's like a call and a response with the which we call it like the the, the vowel chants. So they're 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 chanting the vowel sounds. There's like a call and a response to the whole thing. Um, whereas like if you imagine. You know, you have the master or the teacher and then the student and they kind of go into like the temple room or he makes the argument actually like the setting may have actually been like the desert in general. Like they may they may have actually just gone out into the desert at night and be under the stars so they can like see the planetary descent in general. Like you go out with like a student and a master, they kind of like sat, stand in front of each other and they're chanting these vowels. But you also have all the other initiates like standing around them in a circle and they're basically all chanting i think it's like omega so they're chanting like a long o basically and then their main initiate is kind of standing there and they basically chant a vowel 
corresponding to each of the planets. And every time they chant the vowel, like the crowd responds with an O, and then they just work their way up through the seven spheres. And then like that's how they kind of elevate their consciousness through. And like if you think of like how it's working, it's like, you know, you imagine you in the middle. And yeah. you're kind of like throwing out this vowel sound on the planet, and then you just get a response from like all around you of everyone vibrating omega like back towards oh, you, all like going into you, and then your your consciousness just goes like that oh. sounds awesome. And it goes through have it. You, have you yeah. done it yet? Have you tried it with a group? No, no, no. I've 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 only just uh like I only just found out about this because he wrote like he wrote in his book. I just got his book yesterday and I've I've been reading it like the past couple of days and like he talks about it and he actually mentions it. He's like he, he's talking about it. He's like, yeah, I've I've kind of reconstructed this idea of how it might work. Now we need practitioners like to come yeah. together in person and go and see if it works. Like I have uh, the theory yeah. and this all kind of works and it's great. But I, think, I was like, I'm not a musicologist, so I have no idea what I'm doing. And I'm not an occultist, so I don't know how to do this stuff. So I need somebody, or I need a group of people who are familiar enough with hermetic stuff, that they know, mm-hmm. you know the, the theory and the theology of the seven spheres. Mm-hmm. And I then I need people to come together and actually do it and tell me what happens. You know? I know I know a keyboardist and I know a guitarist. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I have I have a liar as well. So you know, in, in, in terms of the Orphic history, you know, we could uh, yeah, we're all we, could, we, we, we could just make you know. Then this is this sort of it, it moves into like another like weird goal that I have, and this is just it's such a funny thing now. Um, like as well as like teaching lectures or whatever online that I occasionally do with this kind of stuff. Like it's a perpetual goal for me to like build like an actual proper hermetic academy in person. Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I want, like, I want it. Like it's such a thing. I'm like, I, like whether it's a campus or whether it's just like a building or whatever. I'm with you. I, I've, I've got. I want a hermetic retreat. It's the same, the same right, concept. Exactly. You exactly. know, and so I'm looking at properties here. Like, there's a hotel. There's a 14 bedroom hotel that's like mm. two million dollars. I'm like. I just need three million dollars. Yeah, yeah, only two, only two million. <laughs> only that's three fine. million dollars. <laughs> but yeah, and I'm looking at it, and it turns out that it, like it's closed nine months out of the year because of the snow. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> that, yeah. that won't work. <laughs> yeah, but but well, yeah, because you, yeah. you can rent like you can rent like retreat spaces. This is the other thing as well. Like this is like I, I talked to a couple of my other like friends about this who are like in my community and this kind of thing. But um they were like, yeah, like we could totally just start doing retreats. Like we just need we need like you can get a bit more of a member base going. Yeah. Right? So there's an a bit of demand meet. for it. And then you can you just, just go and rent a space for like a weekend and like yeah. people can get their own accommodation or whatever. Um, but it's just bringing people together in person. It's like, and that's the first thing I want to try. <laughs> like when everyone gets they're like, okay, everybody stand in a circle, but we're gonna chant O at each other. And then oh. we'll take turns and oh. then we'll see what happens. What are the other vowels? <laughs> ah. <laughs> hey. Yeah. But like if someone saw us, like imagine just like someone like driving by the highway and like looks someone looks on like and just got like a bunch of freaking like hemetists <laughs> to the field, just going, oh hey. Hey. oh. <laughs> like we would we would look like, very strange to some guy just like oh. driving by like yeah. fucking hemetists again. Fucking hermetists. Fucking hermetists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'd be great yeah i'm here for it mm. it's it's happening see we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna manifest it it's, it's the kingdom at work that's the thing absolutely it's it's the kingdom <laughs> management is what we're working on it's kingdom yeah. management yeah. so yeah brilliant cool. All right. Well, let's let's start wrapping up. Go on for an hour or so, here, haven't we? Yeah, so, yeah. This um, is great, and and we're just getting into the part where where the magicians are talking about their magic. So it's cool. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's a nice yeah. it's a nice flow. We've we've gone in a nice yeah. direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So uh, yeah. So to end with, I mean, I don't know. You have do you have any advice for people who are wanting to start this kind of hermetic praxis, or even like prophemius like spirit working or anything like that? Do you have any advice yeah. for the people? Like what they should yeah. look out for? I, I do like jump in and like practice, practice, practice. Don't be afraid. Y- anything you, anything you call up with magic, it, even if you create a bad life for yourself, you can always fix it with magic. Um, when you, when you do the seven spheres of initiation, you, you generally life gets worse before it gets better because you get initiated, you get purified as the, as you get purified, things get worse. If things get worse from your magic, don't panic. Just keep doing magic keep working on it and, and just fix it. You you can fix it. You have the power to do it and just go for it and enjoy it. Build, yeah. build a life where you're, where you're having a good time because it makes it better for everyone. Yeah. And yeah, like it puts you in a better position to help people as well. And that, that's like, that's the core justice element underneath it. You know, 
Um, but it's like it, it's also something interesting I've noticed. It's it's one of those funny things. Like people always get super turned off with the occult, and they was like, oh, I can't get into the occult because what if I open the door to something like terrible? My life goes to shit. I'm like then right. just close, then just close it. Like you you, you you have the power to do it. If you have the, if yeah. you can open it, you can close it. Like take some responsibility for yourself. Absolutely, and honestly, it's it's we wish we were that strong. If if no. we if we were really that strong, we'd all be millionaires. You know. No. <laughs> So thanks practice. There you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, Rufus, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a great yeah, hour. No problem. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks for having me. Right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Right.